you glad we're presenters. We get to enjoy that Christmas pudding as well. Any turkey for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm joined in the studio by Tim Sherwood. Uh, Tim, look. Talk to me about you as a player and a manager through the Christmas period. Is it something you look forward to or it, did you have that extra uh, roast potato on Christmas Day? I don't think eating is a problem. Yeah. No, obviously drinking is a no-no and yeah. it probably should be for the for the whole of their career and throughout the season. But um, I think eating, pretty much they'll burn it off, you know, hopefully if they run hard enough. I don't think we should sit here and feel sorry for professional footballers. You know, the greatest day of their life. Every day, in my opinion, is Christmas Day for them. I mean, who? everyone wants to be a professional footballer, hmm. you know, and they're lucky enough to be able to do it. And a lot of them are very, very lucky to be able to do it. <laughs> 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 we talk about this really busy Christmas period. It's even busier this season yeah. and how tough it is for sides because of the injuries, the yeah. sheer number of games in a yeah. short space of time. When you were playing and as a manager as well, what was the key to succeeding? Because we've seen this period can derail a, a, a team's... A title ambition. I think the confidence get, get off to a winning start over this busy period. If you win, you don't feel tired. Your legs don't feel tired. You're mentally focused as well. If you start losing games, then it, obviously you get the fatigue and it's like, oh, when's the next game? Where's the next point coming from? So it's just about you know springboarding, getting a little bit of a, a momentum going by winning. Um, and you could say the same. It's not only the Christmas period. You could say the same for the whole season. But And again, don't feel sorry for them. Get on with it. There's a lot of games, so what? That's what, you, that's what you're a professional footballer for. No one wants to train, everyone wants to play football. Play the games, don't get on with it and stop moaning. They're wasting a lot of energy moaning. I love that. <laughs> Goodness me. I'd love to come around yours at Christmas. Anyway, um, let's talk about the Boxer Day fixtures. I mean, there's some really good standout ones. We talked about um, Arsenal and Chelsea. Manchester United, Leicester, that's another good cracker, isn't it? Yeah, uh, listen, we've all been guilty of writing off Manchester United. Mm. I mean, the negative vibe coming over Manchester for the whole of the season is that uh, Oli's got to go, he's not doing this right, he's not doing that right. The facts are, they are there. They win their game in there and they are there in, pulp, in a position behind Liverpool to challenge for the title. Now, Oli has made a lot of us pundits, including myself, through, throughout this first part of the season, eat our words. Mm. He still needs to win. He still needs to continue. I mean, I, I, they're going to improve as well. They will improve as a game. It's just the manner of where they've got their self and how they've got there, losing the home games, especially when the teams they should be beating. But the facts are there for everyone to see. They're going to be second in the league when they win their game in hand. Mm. So if they're not in contention, who else is in contention? I make them, Man City, Liverpool and Tottenham in contention to challenge Liverpool. You mentioned Apache home form there, but their away record is absolutely incredible. incredible. Mm. How much of that is down to the fact there are no fans? You haven't got you know, those tough away trips where you're playing against a side who've got a really good home support. But look at that, it's in- unbelievable. Well, that, yeah, it could work that way, but then you could say that their, their, their home fans at Old Trafford helped them out, so their home form would be better if, it was, if the, they were in the stadium. But... Look, no matter where you are, it's three points. If you're home or if you're away, it's no no extra points. They seem to do well against the big sides. Um, and they are, in the second half of games, rolling over the little sides, you know, or the smaller sides. So, no, they're doing very well at the moment. Can they continue it? It's the consistency level. They're going to be challenging, obviously, out of the Champions League into Europa League. They're going to be challenged there, playing Thursday nights. That might play a part in their challenge for the title. But you'd have to say... Is he doing a good job, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? I'm not going to say he's doing a bad job mm. because if I was managing Manchester United and I was going to be second in the league when I win that town, I wouldn't want anyone. I quite I'd be laughing at the likes of me and other pundits sitting there saying Manchester United can't win the league. I'll say, well, let's have a look at the end of the season. Mm. Mm. Well, a game which they showed this kind of credentials are uh, the game against Leeds. Absolutely astonishing, that game. Clinical and actually played very, very good football. Yeah, I think Manchester Leeds played United. into their hands. Brilliant. I love, love Bielsa. Love his... Um, his, his mindset of well, this is how we play and we will continue to play it. I mean, they've got a brilliant start, McTominay. You know, everyone, myself included, McTominay, yeah, sitting midfield player. He showed on this game alone that he's a box to box player. He's got that real drive and pace uh, for midfield uh, areas, and I think he can really improve. But some of the goals were spectacular. Um, and it was a brilliant game to watch. It was like a basketball game, it was end to end. Um, Leeds never ever set back, always believed they could go forward and score goals. I mean, Fernandes is the key to everything good about Manchester United, but a lot of them are coming to the front now. Rashford's coming to the front. I think he's showing what he can do, but Leeds really played into their hands because they leave so much space in behind. Um, 
because they attack and we, we love to see it. I mean, long may it continue Leeds and Bielsa because it's the, we're in the entertainment business. They could have come up into the Premier League and sat back, got loads of bodies behind the ball, be boring and not good to watch, but they're not. And, and that's why Man United scored six. <laughs> yeah, they're such a different side. They put themselves out of it yeah, after about did. 10 games. Mm. Well, United, um, you know, keep the confidence going against Leicester. What kind of game do you think we're going to see at the weekend? Well, a cagey game, because obviously Brendan's very astute in the way he sets up his team and he changes. He can vary the way he sets them up. So he will not leave the space in behind. There won't be the space for the for the Rashfords and the Martials and the Pace and the Greenwoods. Um, but Man United are going to have to find another way. That means getting Fernandes on the ball. He can obviously, when teams sit back, he can unlock the door. But likewise, I'm sure Oli won't push the fullbacks on too much so that Jamie Vardy can start bending his runs in behind. Vardy's the key to everything Leicester do. I think they're really, he's a really important player for them. And Madison is, is starting to come into a little bit of form. So they've got their own dangers. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Thank you very, very much, Tim. Well, I tell you what, we've asked people uh, to tell us about what match they're looking most forward to. And look, Manchester United versus Leicester City, as we've been talking about, is absolutely pivotal. Uh, Thanet Lectus says uh, the battle for top two is definitely on. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Uh, VJ says uh, he's obviously a, a, an Aston Villa fan. He said he's looking forward to uh, watching Aston Villa against Crystal Palace. Both of those two sides playing quite well uh, mm-hmm. so far this season. So VJ says uh, hashtag uh, up the Villa. And then Matthew Davids uh, as well says hashtag PR fans can't wait to see Manchester United against uh, Leicester City. Uh, confident Manchester United will win and grab second spot in the table. Yeah, definitely. Some really good Boxing Day matches to look forward to. And the Crystal... For me, I owe mm-hmm. hashtag PR fans on Twitter although I won't be tweeting myself, uh, is that battle uh, between uh, the two uh, Portuguese managers, yeah. Jose Mourinho and Nuno Espirito Santo, Spurs against Wolves. Yeah, of course, and I, I think I'm probably looking forward to, um, it would be Liverpool versus West Brom. We were talking about it upstairs in the office. Sam Allardyce is the last manager to win at Anfield, so it could be quite an interesting little Yeah, he's match. up against it this time. Yeah, definitely. OK, now let's head over uh, to Adam Carruthers from Astro Super Sport to talk about uh, some of the action from last night. Adam, let, let's, let's start with Manchester United. It was a, it was a hard fought win, but fair to say they deserved it in the end, right? Ah, oh, for sure. They, they deserved it, but they were also very fortunate. They were very lucky that Edison Cavani was not sent off. He went full WWE choke slam <laughs> on Yeri Mina. If there was VAR involved in the League Cup, don't think he would be on the pitch to score that crucial goal to give Manchester United the lead. Um, what a striker, though. Was he your man of the match? You know, we say there he was fortunate to still be on the pitch. But do you think over, over the course of the 90 minutes, he was your man of the match? I would think so. Uh, Pogba was very good. I think we're approaching a stage where he's almost back to full capacity, even of his future up in the air. I thought Eric Bailly looked solid as well, bringing the ball out from the back. But... Edison Cavani was all over the the Everton defence. He was really pushing them, got his goal, uh, due diligence right at the end and could be an astute signing in the long run for Manchester United. Looking good so far. Yeah, what about Everton then? Did we expect a little bit more from them? Do you feel this was a bit of a chance missed for them? Yeah, they need a trophy, I think. Uh, Quite a few teams do. Tottenham, who we'll talk about later, need one desperately as well. But Carlo Ancelotti, he's... Seems to stabilise the club after a really bad run of results with just one win in seven. Now they've got the back-to-back-to-back victories in the Premier League. And I think they were hoping to carry the momentum on within a different competition. Plus, maybe a bit of a revenge against Manchester United after they lost against them in the league as well. And Adam, as we know, that's teed up a really interesting semi-final. Mm. The Manchester derby, mm. City versus United. We're looking forward to that. That is the match to watch. No disrespect to Tottenham or Brentford, but a Manchester derby is always special. Uh, Early January cannot come fast enough. Just to see Oli versus Pep. It's a competition which the citizens have dominated ever since Pep came to the club. Will they continue to do so? I expect it, but anything can happen this season. But let's talk about um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, it's still a fair, fair bit of pressure on him. Uh, so, w- week in, week out, we can't seem to decide whether he's leaving or whether he's staying at Manchester United. Is it fair? No, I don't think it is fair at all. Look at their season. I think they're doing great. Yes, he's been there two years. Yes, progress probably hasn't been as fast as they would like. But Liverpool have been fantastic. I think 
Manchester United have closed the gap to them and also Manchester City. And I'm sure you saw the stat. They win their game in hand, they go in second place. Although I will add, if Aston Villa win their two games in hand, then it's them that go into second place instead. Really is a mad season, don't you think? Absolutely. Adam, stay there. Let's bring in Dan Kilpatrick, who was focusing on Spurs last night. A good performance uh, for them, 3-1 against uh, Stoke. Could they do it on a wet Wednesday night in Stoke? The answer was <laughs> they yes, did. they yeah. could. Uh, Dan, you watched the game very closely, of course, uh, in your role there. Yeah, <laughs> 